Section 14.1 Factors that affect reaction rates In this chapter we're going to study a branch of chemistry called kinetics. And kinetics has to do with how fast, which is the rate, at which a chemical reaction occurs. So if you pour two chemicals together, it may instantaneously happen in a, you know, a trillionth of a second, or it may take 10 million years, whatever that means, to, for a reaction rate to happen. So a, um, just because two things will go together or make something doesn't have anything to do with how fast they do it. So when you're studying the speed of a reaction, you are studying kinetics. And in this section, we're going to talk about what can you do that kind of tweak a reaction so that it happens faster. Okay, so it has a lot to do with what's going on when reactions, when a uh, reactants break apart from each other, those bonds break, and then new bonds form to form the products. So the reaction mechanism, which we'll study later in this chapter, is exactly what's going on. How does it break apart? So what breaks apart first? And what's the energy of that? And what, what are the intermediate steps? And what breaks apart second? And then how does it come together again? And does it come together in a certain order? Those are the mechanisms. So um, a mechanism is involved in kinetics, like what's going on, and the speed of how, fa how fast it's going on. That's also dealing with kinetics. So we can tweak a reaction to make it happen faster or slower. That's actually the purpose of a refrigerator. A refrigerator slows down a chemical reaction called spoilage. So if you put your milk out on the counter for days, you're going to end up with yogurt. But if you put your milk in the refrigerator, it takes a long, long time for it to get all clotty. So you can keep it longer. You can keep food overnight. You can keep it longer. In the hot summertime, food would spoil in just a couple hours and you wouldn't be able to eat it. It would have so many bacteria in it that you wouldn't want it. It could make you sick. So temperature has something to do with it. If you speed up the temperature or increase the temperature, you can speed up a reaction. If you slow, uh, slow down a reaction by decreasing the temperature. So that's one of them. The other one right here on this slide is physical state. So for instance, if you want to make a reaction with a solid, well, the solid is reacting on the surface of that solid. So let's say you're going to burn a piece of wood. Okay, it is easier and faster to burn sawdust than it would be to burn a, a whole tree because the reaction of that fire is only reacting at the surface of the wood. But if the surface of that wood, if you ground a tree up into sawdust and you had so much surface area, then the reaction is happening all over the place at once and you could burn a, tr a whole tree faster if it were smaller. So if you were to have tiny, tiny pieces of wood sticks uh, in the same amount of wood as if you had a whole log, uh, you could start a fire faster and burn it to ash faster and get the heat out faster if it were smaller. That's why coal dust is really a bad thing in a coal mine because that coal dust, since it has a high surface area, could actually explode. You could have, you could have all kinds of, there's all kinds of uh, mine fatalities due to coal dust uh, explosion uh, along with certain gases, of course. So if you were to, to grind something up and make it smaller, it's the reaction of that solid would go faster. The second thing that could affect the reaction rate is the concentration. So for instance, if you, um, if you were the only man in the world, your chances of getting a date would be really high because you have all of the women in the whole world to choose from. But if you were just one of many, you may never get a date. I'm sorry to tell you that. So the higher the concentration, the more likely that that molecule will bump into something that it can react with. So if, if you have, say, um, something that could explode and then something that could burn, the, higher, the more fuel you have, the more likely you're going to have a fire. So the higher the fuel, 
the higher the concentration, uh, the higher the pro probability of having a fire. So two molecules have to come together or two atoms have to come together to make a reactant. Well, if you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of those, then the likelihood of bumping into one is higher. So if you, incre you increase the concentration of the reactants, either both of them or, or one of them, you'll have more of a likelihood of those two coming together with the right energy to make a product. And your, your product can be made faster by doing that. We've already talked about temperature. The higher the temperature, the more likely it is to happen. So for instance, in the chemistry lab, we've got Bunsen burners that will allow you to put a fire under a test tube where you've put two chemicals together and maybe those chemicals are not reacting immediately, spontaneously, but if you give it a little bit of help by making them bump into each other more frequently, that's what you're doing when you heat them up. If you heat up a liquid and make it boil and, and rush around, then the molecules inside are bumping into each other more frequently. They're, the likelihood of two things coming together to form a product is higher. The colder something is, the less likelihood you have uh, to, to have a reaction. And we already talked about that with a refrigerator. The last thing we'll talk about today is a catalyst. And a catalyst is something that is that helps speed up a reaction without being used up. Okay, What's, what it's actually doing, it's playing with the mechanism. The mechanism, remember, is how do things break apart and then how do they come together? What is actually the steps or the hundreds of steps that it happens inside a chemical reaction in order to actually make it work? Well, a catalyst just basically makes a shortcut. It makes a lower energy, it takes a lower energy to get from reactants to products. And if it, it's a lower energy, it's more likely to happen. So a catalyst is just going to lower the energy of activation or how fast it's or how much energy it takes to make that reaction happen. And so it, it goes faster. So you've got in your car a catalytic converter, okay, which will take um, basically take air pollution out of the air. So things that could either be poisonous in the air or nuisance in the air and turn it back into something that can be managed and eventually thrown away. That's a, that is a catalyst. The catalyst is never used up, but the reaction is, is faster when the catalyst is there. We'll look at those in, um, in, in another time.